Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek here, and my last video has brought me to the conclusion that there are people who just do not understand gear ratios, they do not understand how the conversion of a torque converter works, and so they comment rather blindly. So I think we should do some reality versus math. I think we should do perfect world math versus the reality of being on a drag strip. Now, in this picture that I have posted, this is roughly the setup that we had. We had a 30 series torque converter that has a 10 tooth output that goes to a 40 tooth gear on the rear. Now, let's pull up some math and let's talk about this. Now, don't get scared about the math. I'm not going to sit here and babble at you doing math. It's already been done through this entire chart. If you'd like to pause it, read down through, get an idea, you're more than welcome to. But, long story short is, if I input an RPM on this area here, I input what my ratio is here, I have my 18-inch tires doing my calculation down through, and I end up with my top speed in mile per hour. Now, what we ended up with was 40.8 miles per hour in the real world. So we had a 40 tooth on the rear, so that is a 10 on the output, that is a 40 on the rear, which gives us a 4 to 1 ratio if the torque converter fully engages. We're going to discuss that in just a second. So 40, I mean 4,000, ratio of 4, ends up with a perfect world output of 53.52. That is nowhere near 40.8 whatsoever. And so many people immediately jump to the conclusion that the torque converter is not working at all. So let's pop up a couple of pictures here. We have picture number one. This is the torque converter in action, sitting at idle. My tire is lifted off of the ground. There is no kickback whatsoever. So only thing that matters right now is engine RPM. So, sitting at idle, sitting at 4,000. So right now we have a one to one on the pulleys, which gives us a clear ratio. It is one to one, therefore the torque converter is out of the equation and the only thing that matters is from your 10 tooth here to whatever your rear is. This is silver because I've changed it over to a 50 tooth and I'll be running that because of the fact of the torque converter not being able to get enough torque. Now, when a torque converter zeroes out and it stops fighting the torque of the rear gear and the tire, you then in, end up in what's called torque converter overdrive. As you can see, this belt is absolutely expanded over the top of everything. This is normal. This is what is supposed to happen. This is called 30 series overdrive. And right now I am holding this bike at about 6,000 RPM. Now, just to go and clarify, let's go ahead and watch that in action. So if I pull this up, So right now, it is fully engaged. I'm at just a little bit under 3,000 or so. We're going to keep coming up through. So we're at 4,000, and it's beginning to go into overdrive. Now, normally, it would not go into overdrive until after it has gotten out of the torque curve on the engine. It's got to get into 5,000s normally when it's under load. As we come up through, we should see it skyrocket into 5,000, and you can clearly see it's just floating in overdrive because there's nothing at the rear tire that is holding it back. So now, if we close this, what we have is 40 tooth, 4,000, 53, 50 tooth, 4,000, 42, 60 tooth, 4,035. We have 
4,000 RPMs at a ratio of 5.25, meaning the torque converter did not fully manage to engage all the way to one to one, and we have 40.78, 40.8. I'm gonna call that bingo. I'm gonna call that close enough. So what I did was I went back through the Insta360 footage and I grabbed this screenshot at 400 foot down the drag strip, fully topped out, sitting at 4,000 RPM. As you can clearly see where my arrow is, that is not fully engaged. So, what does this mean? What it means is, when your torque converter is first starting and it is sitting here at idle, you have a three to one gear ratio. That means that from here to here, it multiplies the ratio from here to here by three. So if this is a four to one ratio, when you start off the line, you have a 12 to one ratio. That's the reason why when you put a torque converter on, all of a sudden you start to do wheelies. So what do we come down to? What do we got right now? We have perfect world, 6,000 RPM with a 40 on the rear. We should be able to pull off 80 miles per hour. Perfect world. On the other hand, we have the jack shaft which had a 40 tooth on the rear. We pulled 6,000 RPM without any issue whatsoever while running the jack shaft. And we have a tried and true 40 miles per hour. We proved it over and over again. Original jack shaft set up to a 60 tooth in the rear sitting at 38,000. We have the time slip for that on a governed engine and we got 17 miles per hour. Look at that, math says that's correct. And then another YouTuber, Black66, who I really recommend taking a chance to go look at, Black66 has confirmed these two. That if you had a factory jack shaft to the 50 tooth on the rear sitting at 4,000 RPMs, you end up with 21 to 22 miles per hour. He ended up finding 23 in his video. And that seems to be a discrepancy that goes back and forth quite a bit in different people trying them. There's been argument that the Coleman's may or may not have some quality control issues. But what does seem to be consistent is that if you upgrade your engine to about 6,000 RPM, running the jack shaft to a 50 tooth, you end up with 33 to 32 miles per hour, yet again, this has been confirmed by Black66 in not one but two or three separate videos, and I will include this link in my description for his video. Well, where are we at now? Where we're at right now is that we have put a 50 tooth onto the engine. We're going, I mean, onto the tire. We're going to be upgrading the engine. I'm working on that right now. We've actually got a rattlesnake with extended rod, flat top, piston, and chinesium flywheel going on. We're building a second engine right now that is going to be a Mod 2 with a Ducar rod with a um, Dino DVL flywheel and a couple of other things. The idea being we're going to hopefully hit this number right here. In a perfect world, we should be able to clear 60 as long as we have the torque to be able to get the torque converter to the one-to-one -one ratio. What the real reality goal would be to hit the overdrive on the torque converter and clear 65 miles per hour. Now, there are people that put spacers in order to lock out overdrive. And the reason for the argument of locking out overdrive is the belt wear. There are many, many, many people that have proven that once you end up in overdrive, if you consistently use it in overdrive, that you will eventually, eventually wear the belt out extremely fast. Because at that point, you're riding on the upper level of the torque converter and just on the outer edge piece. 
So, that is my rundown. Your torque converter, when you start off the line, is a three to one ratio that triples whatever your final drive ratio is. So if I have a torque converter and I have a four to one final drive ratio, when I take off, I have a 12 to one at start. If I have a five to one, I have a 15 to one ratio when I start. If I have a six to one ratio, a 60 tooth in the back, then I would have a 18 to one gear ratio when I start. To put that in perspective, when I took off, well, I had the jack shaft, it was a 12 to 1 ratio, and I did a wheelie straight off without question, attempting to hold it down on the drag strip. Now, if you'd like to be able to run these calculations for yourself, I'm also going to post a link to this. If you fill out the website exactly the way I have here, for some reason, their calculator argues a little bit back and forth with mine. I'm not sure whether they've got something else programmed into it, but this hits pretty close to home if you calculate it out. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I hope this really clarified torque converter gear ratio stuff for you and the real reality of life versus scientific math. Have a good day and thank you.